Hello friends, welcome to another episode by Engineering Today, and we're back with some interesting space updates. We'll begin with SpaceX initiating installation of new Raptor 2 engines on Super Heavy Booster. Then we'll talk about Jupiter 3 launch on Falcon Heavy in the future, and we'll end our updates with a recent launch from SpaceX. Let's get started with SpaceX initiating installation of new Raptor 2 engines on the Super Heavy Booster 7. Just a few days ago, SpaceX teams have completed the back-to-back cryo-proof tests of Super Heavy Booster 7 post its major repairs. No official update had then come up from SpaceX regarding the results of that rapid cryo-proof test. Almost two days after the last cryo-test, on the 13th of May, SpaceX teams attached a crane to B-7 and removed it from the orbital launch mount before rolling the rocket back to Starbase's build site on the following day. During the last test, they've once moved the Raptor engine installation stand towards Booster 7. It was assumed that SpaceX may install Raptor engines at that time, but the stand was moved back to its storage area and Super Heavy was instead removed from the mount and returned to the factory. Thus, the Raptor installation didn't immediately take place. Some sources state that as the B-7 was rapidly removed from the orbital launch mount, it was assumed that possibly SpaceX has faced some setback in back-to-back -back cryo tests. Or maybe there's some issues with their repair work that will not allow any further tests. But SpaceX proved those assumptions wrong. On the 17th of May, three Raptor engines were spotted traveling from a production tent to the Mega Bay assembly building where Booster 7 was kept. And according to some reports, SpaceX has already begun installing new Raptor 2 engines on Booster 7. Reports also state that the main intention of bringing back B-7 to the build site, Mega Bay, was to install Raptor engines. As per sources, those three spotted Raptors were part of those 20 Raptor Boost engines that SpaceX will install on the outer ring of Super Heavy's B-7 aft end. It's interesting to note that installation of any Raptor Boost 2 engines on B-7 is possibly a major indication that SpaceX has decided to install a full set of 33 Raptors on the booster before they began their static fire testing. And if it happens, it will be a major leap for SpaceX. And Booster 7 will not have to face the fate of Booster 4, facing prolonged delays in Raptor installation and eventually retirement without any major useful test. On the other hand, SpaceX appears to have almost finished assembling an upgraded Ship 24 that's first in line to sit atop Booster 7 into space. Report says that SpaceX has already requested road closures for three 12-hour test windows on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of May. It's possible that SpaceX could start test firing of Booster 7 with just one to three Raptor engines installed and gradually add more as they gain confidence. Let's move to our latest update regarding SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, which is on the way to launch Jupiter 3. In recent times, the line of SpaceX launches has gotten significantly delayed due to delay in customer payload readiness of one mega satellite named Jupiter 3, or EchoStar 24. Just a couple of weeks ago, EchoStar had announced that Maxar Technologies won't deliver their much-awaited Jupiter 3 satellite in time for their late 2022 launch on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Prodman Cowell, president of Hughes Network Systems, the EchoStar subsidiary, stated that this delay is due in part to relocation of critical resources at Maxar to a higher-priority government-related spacecraft project. Maxar had also revealed that Jupiter 3 was expected to weigh around 9.2 metric tons during its launch on a SpaceX rocket. This great weight of the satellite has put some questions on which SpaceX rocket will be chosen, and according to some recent updates, it's come out that this satellite will be launched by a Falcon Heavy rocket. 
Earlier in late March 2022, during an industry conference, Hughes had publicized that they'd selected SpaceX to launch their Maxar-built Jupiter-3 geostationary communication satellite. During this announcement, it was also stated by Hughes that the satellite would be launched by Q4 of the year 2022, which was earlier planned for Q2 of 2022. Almost a month after Hughes' announcement, the manufacturer of Jupiter-3, Maxar Technologies, stated that the completion of Jupiter-3 had been delayed and its launch has been pushed back to early 2023 or further. Presently, Hughes Jupiter-3 launches the 10th mission firmly scheduled to launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket in between the rest of 2022 up to 2025. Though the launch of Jupiter-3 will create a world record for the largest commercial geostationary satellite ever launched, yet this mission will fall a little short in front of the record for total payload to GTO in a single launch held by Ariane Space's Ariane 5 rocket. In 2021, Ariane 5 had launched two communication satellites, weighing 10.27 tons in total, which is almost a ton more than SpaceX's Jupiter-3 spacecraft. But this is not the first time SpaceX sent a heavy payload. Almost four years back, SpaceX had broken the record for heaviest commercial geostationary satellite launch when they successfully delivered Telesat's 7,076-kilogram Telstar 19V atop a Falcon 9 rocket to geostationary transfer orbit. Taking satellite's weight and booster recovery in mind, SpaceX had launched Telstar 19V to a transfer orbit with its apogee well below the geostationary orbit. Then the satellite had to carry out the rest of the work of orbit raising. As per some regulatory documents, Jupiter-3 would have a dry weight of 5,817 kilograms. This is way higher than Telstar 19V's dry mass of just three tons. For Telstar, dry mass was almost half of its total weight, and the rest was fuel for orbit raising and maneuvers. Normally, massive geostationary satellites take an extra 50 to 80 percent of their dry mass in fuel, not about 130 percent. As Jupiter 3's has 5.8 ton dry mass, it wasn't unthinkable that it would also be launched to a low geostationary transfer orbit on a recoverable Falcon 9, but still it was questionable. It was assumed that a recoverable Falcon 9 launch may have only been able to loft Jupiter 3 around half the way to GTO from low Earth orbit. When reports of selection of Falcon Heavy by Maxar and Hughes came out, it was initially surprising, yet it increased the horizon of the mission. Falcon Heavy can easily place the satellite in nominal GTO orbit with full booster recovery. Jupiter-3 will likely be the heaviest spacecraft of any kind to reach geostationary orbit, 35,785 kilometers above Earth's surface. It will also become the one of the heaviest dry mass to reach GEO. The massive dry weight of Jupiter-3 indicates that the actual hardware of the communications hub is exceptionally large and much powerful. Report says that Jupiter-3 will deliver a maximum bandwidth of 500 gigabits per second. We'll wrap up with an update on the recent SpaceX launch. On the 18th of May, a flight-proven SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket had successfully launched a new fleet of Starlink Internet satellites, Starlink 4-18, into orbit and returned to Earth for a magnificent landing at sea. Jesse Anderson, SpaceX production manager, said during the mission webcast that Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites into space. The launch was carried out at 6.59 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time from NASA's Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. As per sources, the launch time was 39 minutes later than what SpaceX had scheduled earlier. Report says that this launch marks SpaceX's third Starlink mission in five days, by counting missions carried out on the 13th and 14th of May. This launch completed the 21st launch and landing of the year for SpaceX. Starlink 4-18 is SpaceX's 46th dedicated launch of operational Starlink satellites, and presently the total number of working Starlink satellites in orbit counts about 2,370 satellites. This recent Starlink mission marked the fifth launch of booster B-1052. Earlier, SpaceX had used this Falcon booster to launch their Arabsat 6A mission, 
as well as the Space Test Project 2 flight for the U.S. Space Force. This booster also had the Cosmos SkyMed second-generation FM2 satellite launch for Italy and also an earlier Starlink flight. In the launch webcast, Anderson stated that almost nine minutes after liftoff, the Falcon 9 booster had returned to Earth along with a soft landing on SpaceX's drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which was waiting for the booster in the Atlantic Ocean. Sources state that SpaceX teams got outstanding video footage of booster landing through its onboard cameras. Anderson also stated that the landing marked the 121st touchdown of SpaceX Falcon booster. As per reports, SpaceX's used booster 1052 earlier was a Falcon Heavy side booster. Later in 2021, it was converted into a Falcon 9 booster. Interestingly, some reports state that B-1052 will again be converted into a Falcon Heavy booster and will pair up with B-1053. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.